Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review today. I'm here to tell you all about the latest album from Nero De Marti Emoto out January 24th on Season of Mist. This album has seven tracks, one hour and seven minutes in length, and this is the band's third full length studio album. To me, the record is really emotional, and that to me is the main purpose. It's it, it's the heartbeat of this record. Everything else around it, the, the, the music, the style, the genres, the structures, all of those are there in order to get the most emotional response out of you the listener as possible. That to me is the lifeline of this album. And the way they do that is with a very unique blend of styles. You're gonna get death metal, you're gonna get prog, you're gonna get psychedelic, you're gonna get post metal, even a little bit of classical music is represented in the way the songs are structured together and then on the overall picture that the record has to offer. Very dynamic album going in a lot of different directions, not only from a song to song perspective, but even within the same songs, the album just really goes, uh, it, it's almost like it follows the path of least resistance on every single track. So every single track has a different direction, has a different structure, has a different place to go. Overall, it really feels like uh, a musical opera, if you will. It, it has, it's, it's so emotional, it's so driven, it has so many different layers to it, you really feel like you're listening to an opera because it's very emotionally driven and it really gets a very unique response out of, out of individuals. Not everybody's gonna get the same response out of this album. It really depends on the listener and their own e emotional drive and their own, and their own personal feelings and personal uh, I would say emotional baggage, if you will, and that's really going to dictate how you're going to connect with the record and how and what you're going to get out of the record. Uh, the album, in my opinion, is very linear. All songs, like I said, they're very different in the way the structure is put together, but they're all interconnected. There's this blanket, this fog, that really covers the album from the first to the last song. And while the songs are very unique in their own way, very unique in their own structure, there are so many co common elements spread out throughout the record that this fog just really feels like it blankets them all. So while the record has seven tracks, and this is not a concept record, it really feels like one single song. You could listen to this record and feel like it's it's one song that's divided in, in seven acts versus seven in independent songs that make a record together. So it has a, an inward outward movement versus an outward inward movement as far as I'm concerned. At least that's what I felt listening to this album. It's very hard, in my opinion, even perhaps impossible to take one song out of the seven and make it work. It, it, it's really like taking a quote out of a book and try to explain to somebody with that quote what the story is all about. You're obviously gonna misquote the book, you're obviously gonna misrepresent the book, and this album feels that way. If you take one song out of it in order to get a picture of what you're gonna get yourself into, you're gonna have a very limited, uh, out of focus picture. You're not gonna have the full uh, vision of what this album is about and that's why I say that this album really feels like one even though it's not a concept record it really has a lot of the same elements that you would find on concept albums overall this is this album is filled with emotion to me that's what drives it that's what drives the sound, that's what drives the vocals, that's what drives everything that surrounds this album is emotion. I actually felt that the vocals really play more of an atmospheric role on the record than anything else. And more than telling you a story, the vocals are there to drive emotion out of you and to represent personal uh, emotional thoughts and experiences from, from the point of view uh, uh, of the musicians. So I, I felt that the, the use of vocals was very interesting in the way they did it. It, it really created a different dynamic within the album and to me it really elevated the overall atmosphere that the record has but going back to what I was saying overall I feel like this album is more uh, of a meal and it's a meal not one of those that you get during drive-through in a fast food restaurant this to me is more uh, more of a seven course meal that really requires a, a, an acquired taste in order for you to be able to digest it and fully understand what the band is trying to do with their sound and with this record. So I think this is one of those records that really requires a lot of attention from the listener. It really requires an educated ear in order for you to really be able to understand what the musicians are trying to do with this record and trying to go and trying to show you. It's a very unique record with very unique sound with a very unique approach. So perhaps not an album that will fit everybody's mold, but an album that will find a home with a lot of people out there that will be able to connect with this sort of style, sound, and definitely approach. To me, the approach, more than anything, is what convinced me about the quality of this record. 
Now, as far as songs are concerned, Emoto is the one I want to start off is the name of the album, a song that in my opinion has a very somber feel. Uh, and it has a somber feel as it opens, but then as it pushes through, you feel this controlled intensity that, that is tr always trying to push through this thickness of sound, but it, it very rarely is really able to break through it. When it does break through, you really get a lot more aggression, you get a lot more intensity, but it's not always able. You feel like it's trying, the, it's trying to get through, but the, the thickness of that fog that surrounds this track is so heavy, is so thick, that it's really hard to push through. There are uh, a couple of moments where it does push through and then you feel like the floodgates have opened and all this aggression and intensity are coming towards you. I absolutely love the bass on this track. To me, adds another dark component to the way the music comes at you, to the way the song sounds, and, and it carries a lot, not only a lot of darkness, but it also carries a lot of heaviness with it. Same thing could be said about the vocals. They act almost like an atmospheric element more than anything else. And that's something that's true throughout the record, but I really felt that in this song, more than others, it's a song that the vocals are really there to create an atmosphere, to, to give you a sense uh, of, of what uh, of, of, of emotions more than anything else, more important than telling you a, a story or, or, or describing um, a point in time within that story, the vocals are really there to paint a more vivid picture, a more atmospheric picture. So I really like that aspect and I really like the overall construction of this track. Next, La Casa del Diavolo. This is a song that is also very controlled more in a deviant way. This song has portions of the song, they're very numbing. And not only they're numbing, I felt that they had a little bit of a deviant aspect to it, almost the evilness built in into the darkness and the, and the controlled atmosphere that exists within this track. Sure, there are intense outbursts uh, that, that happen throughout the song that really become a lot more violent, a lot more aggressive, really tearing down the walls and to me one of the reason that happens is because of all the other uh, parts of the song feel like i said very controlled very numbing so you have these two polar opposite fields uh, in battle with each other one kind of magnifies the other and the other magnifies the other so they have this reciprocal um, motion towards both that that really works well for a song that has this kind of dynamic sometimes very heavy very destructive and at the same time very peaceful and melancholic is a song that's very jackal and hide if you will really hiding one emotion over the other and then substituting one for another different one has a very unique dynamic and has a very unique range of emotions feelings all the way throughout. It's a song that really takes you on a roller coaster of itself. It really has high points, low points, and like I said, is able to be sometimes melodic and melancholic and peaceful in one moment, and then in the next moment be absolutely heavy and destructive. So I really like the dynamic of this track from that perspective. Last, Iradia. Iradia, this is a song that in my opinion has a lot of psychedelic and prog elements. And that's something that's true throughout the record. The more I listen to this album, the more I felt that I, 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 it's almost like I was on an acid trip. This album has a lot of hidden and sometimes not so hidden psychedelic elements that really work well to create this incredible atmosphere that the album has. When you mix that with a lot of prog elements, then you really have the, uh, the, the, this, this dynamite of atmospheric elements coming at you that just really transport you into a different dimension. This song has a lot of those elements built in into it. The vocals are very haunting. This is one of the tracks where the vocals play a lot less of an atmospheric element. They play a lot more of your traditional role of storytelling in this in this specific song. Perhaps one of the songs on the album where that's more noticeable versus all others. I really like that because the vocals on this track specifically are very haunting. Uh, it, they're really a force behind the overall song. They're really the driving force, if you will, of this track, which is not very common on other songs. On other songs, you're gonna get more of an emotional driven tracks, or you're gonna get tracks that are very drum driven, or you're gonna get tracks that are, that are just purely atmospheric. This one I really felt that was very vocally driven from the beginning all the way to the end. You really feel the vocals are behind, they're not only behind the driving seat, they're in the passenger seat and they're the car. You, you really feel like they're everything about this song and this re really pushes this track forward. The song at one point in time feels like it flatlines. It, it really feels like it stagnates, almost like it's finishing, like it's ending. And then there's a resurgence of power in life, almost like the song re-emerges itself to come back to the same point where you were when the song started. So it has a very interesting structure and overall journey to it. 
All right, guys, this is it. This is Nero De Marti Emoto out January 24th on Season of Mist. I really want to hear your thoughts because this is one of those albums that's really, like I said, really hard to digest. And it's one of those that really requires a lot of time and a lot of attention for you to really get lost into it. Very atmospheric, very psychedelic at times. And to me, it's a really strongly emotionally driven record. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. I'll be looking forward to reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.